In this episode, we're back working towards colonizing the entire solar system. We have our ship Axum that has just arrived at Duna and Ike here to fulfill a contract. Um, one of these contracts that I had was to land, collect a surface sample, and return the craft that I sent to Kerbin. So this vehicle is going to come in, land, and uh, perform that effort here. It's landing a few Kerbals, uh, and we have plenty of life support and capability to survive on the surface for an extended period and take in the views. To prevent too much boil off of the liquid hydrogen on board, we do a relatively short sortie, uh, take back off, and return to Axum. So after plotting a rendezvous, we're going to arrive and redock. This design is kind of based on the Altair concept uh, from the early Constellation program with a little bit of change uh, on my own uh, concept here, and it is meeting back up. Um, with the intent to offload the crew. Then we're going to dive back down the gravity well into Duna and uh, meet up with our station there to perform a surface sortie. A little bit of a fast intercept there, and we split Axum and its associated lander up to dock with the station. We have a surface base out here that has been mining ore and is prepared to receive new crew. Um, I think there's a couple crew on the ground, maybe one or two in the uh, surface out there connected to the, uh, the reactor, but we need to send more down, so we're going to use our atmospheric entry vehicle to come in and land at the base. We also have um, some girders to go in and perform some work on. So in that lander was an engineer, and that engineer is going to place all of these girders on the back of a, uh, a truck here so that we can position them and begin assembly. Um, I don't have the latest version of KSP installed, so I'm using the uh, Kerbal attachment system and I think Kerbal inventory system. Uh, to be able to place these girders and weld them together. It's a very tedious process, but it's the, uh, the best way to build large structures uh, that pack up and fit into a small package. Because we are going for realism, so uh, I've sent all my resources on this lander. It, uh, it did a little bit of a flip on landing, so the, uh, the crew is just going to go out there and work on establishing a pipeline to the, uh, the launch pads that we're putting in. Um, after a, a, a dust storm passes, we're going to launch our ore storage here on another contract where we have to land, I think, 5,000 units of ore um, onto the surface of Ike, and that's a lot of material. So this ship is going to have to go up, um, deliver uh, that ore, and then it may need some help getting back. This is a lot of tonnage to ship up off the surface, but this lander is more than capable um, because Hercules, uh, based on the NASA proposal for Hercules, uh, is a little bit oversized in this context, but we're able to uh, travel to Ike and land our material there. This is an uncrewed vehicle, so it's got to maintain uh, radio contact, which during the course of this mission was a little bit difficult because I ended up uh, uh, needing to time my landing window to coincide with a good connection to, to a, uh, a pilot. But it ended up working out, and uh, as you can see, we made it down to the surface.
Hercules gets this fat, almost $2 million contract completed, and we're able to lift off again. Um, and uh, now that we have more funds, we've more than paid for the mission. Now it burns to remake orbit and hopefully return to Duna to perform more heavy lift operations. Uh, our whole goal is to be as cost conscious as possible, but um, fuel is a limited resource. And due to the weight of Hercules, we have to dispatch Zemea to come out and grab it. another fast uh, intercept here with the, uh, the station and uh, we're ready to redock the two elements. We have enough reserve propellant in Zemea to redock and Hercules also docks on one of the other ports, but we're getting very crowded at this point. So on the surface, we're going to refuel our uh, ascent and descent vehicle there. And uh, the base is getting built out a little bit as we go. So at this point, we have a new set of launch and landing pads. And it's going to be time to reland our vehicle after refueling it. There's an ore processor on the station, and we're able to use that to refuel this vehicle and some of the others. Hercules does a classic uh, Falcon 9 or Starship core booster super heavy style uh, return where it's going to come in, burn its main engines, and stop itself right over the launch pad and landing pad. This, uh, this took a couple tries just due to um, having air resistance. I'm not as good at targeted landing. Um, so I had to fiddle around and uh, touch down, save, and then uh, come back <laughs> at my earlier quick save. So this takes uh, this takes a lot of practice to be able to do targeted landing on like a vacuum world, like a moon. But in this context, it's even harder because there's air to mess with you and apply uh, deceleration force. Uh, it's also even harder when you're trying to record content, so um, my uh, uh, focus on this attempt was just trying to land. So you can see myself coming in and landing on landing pad 2 here. We're going to readjust our legs from our previous landing, and we're good to go. Back on station, we have crew waiting for departure. So this crew is going to return us back to uh, Kerbin, and we're going to have another crew rotation uh, in the future to come man the base. So I hope you like that one. Uh, I got a lot more of these episodes in the pipeline. I just don't always have time to uh, make sure that I get them done. So please enjoy and uh, let me know if you like this content. I know I don't spit it out as my main content, but I get a lot of uh, positive feedback sometimes from the uh, Kerbal Space Program Reddit and uh, people usually want more of it. So um, here you go, just in time for the, uh, the end of the year. Thanks, see ya.